a new iPhone is here. And perhaps more importantly, with it, a new version of iOS that I am pretty excited about, iOS 18. Let's take a look at some of the biggest changes, starting with Control Center, where Apple has decided to make things much more customizable. Not only are you no longer forced to have certain buttons in the Control Center at all, but you can take the ones you do want and rearrange them however you want, even resizing them. And if you need more space than just the Control Center's main screen, you can now also add additional screens, up to 15 of them, if you want to stay hyper-organized by dedicating different screens to different groups of shortcuts. Connectivity has also been broken out into a separate screen, which kind of makes sense with so many options for them. And you can even put shortcuts for third-party apps in the Control Center now, as long as developers support it. Wahoo! Another similar, but again, major change is to the home screen where iOS has finally caught up to Android. Stop me if you've heard that one before. By allowing you to move your icons wherever you'd like instead of having them all snap up to the top left. So if you wanna leave gaps between your icons or align them to the right or the bottom edge, you are totally free to do that. Additionally, you can resize your icons and choose between light, dark, or tinted themes, with the latter allowing you to pick a theme color, similar to Google's Material U design language. But as important as these visual changes are, we know that you probably want a closer look at the new capabilities. We'll tell you more right after we thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Don't throw your phone away just because it has minor damage on the screen. You can easily fix it with iFixit, yes. You fix it. iFixit has hundreds of guides on their website. Whether it's your iPhone, your camera, or even your ice cream machine, they've got you covered. And choosing to repair isn't just the smarter choice, it's the more sustainable one. Right now, you can get 20% off iFixit iPhone screen and battery replacement parts. Don't get tempted by the latest and greatest. Repair your old devices with iFixit using our link in the description. One huge new feature that Apple's pushing hard is Apple Intelligence, which, Okay, it's an AI platform to compete with the likes of Google Gemini and Galaxy AI, and as you would expect, it does many of the typical AI tasks. Uh, summarizing long passages of text and the contents of group chats, adjusting the tone of something you've written, and generating, quote, original, unquote, content, including both text and images. But while these can be useful functions, they're hardly unique to the iOS ecosystem, so why don't we instead talk about how thanks to AI, Siri might start being less of a, how you say, complete dumpster fire. Apple says that with the help of AI, Siri will give more relevant results, help edit photos, perform actions inside third-party apps, and even speak in a more natural voice. The forecast is calling for clear skies in the morning. Siri can also utilize ChatGPT to expand its capabilities, but you will have to opt in as Apple's brand messaging has been pretty big on telling customers that their sensitive data stays on their device. And that clearly won't be the case if your prompts are being sent to OpenAI. The bad news about all of this is if you're excited about Apple intelligence, you're gonna have to wait a while since it isn't rolling out until next month. And even then it will only come for iPhone 15 Pro users and later as part of the version 18.1 release. There are also some less obvious, but still important changes. RCS has now been fully implemented, which will give you a more fully featured chat platform, even if the person on the other end isn't using iMessage. And this is cool. There's a new game mode that delivers a one-two punch to smooth out the mobile gaming experience. It limits background activity so that more of the CPU and GPU power can go toward driving graphically intense titles at the highest possible frame rates, while also reducing the latency for AirPods and Bluetooth game controllers, meaning less of a delay between pressing a button and seeing the result on your screen or hearing it in your ears. Perhaps the most interesting feature that isn't being discussed as much though is messages via satellite. If you've got an iPhone 14 or later, you can still use iMessage or SMS even if you don't have a Wi-Fi signal or any cell service at all. Now we don't have time to get into every feature of the new iOS without turning this video into a PhD dissertation. Apple's official list of new features is 22 pages long, but these were our highlights. Is there a feature we didn't mention that you're excited about? like math notes? Or maybe one you think is overhyped? Let us know down in the comments. And if you'd like to learn more about a piece of tech that Apple just plain gave up on, how about you go watch this video next?